ברוך, תורה בריחיימוב, לפני דברי תורה, רצון בעזרת השם שהקדוש ברוך הוא יפרוץ מעיינותיו החוצה ויעלה מעלה מעלה במענות התורה, בירבה תלמידים בעזרת השם. We want to speak today about the topic of can you have an internet business open on Shabbat? Very, very common topic today. Question that many people are involved in. Are you allowed to have your internet website open on Shabbat? Are you allowed to have your merchandise offered on places like Amazon and so on? Are you allowed to offer something or to offer to buy something on eBay, for example, which is an auction that's going to take place on Shabbat? Is that something permitted or that's not permitted on Shabbat? You're not allowed to make business on Shabbat. Business on Shabbat is obviously forbidden. It's a sur. So if you have over here such a business that makes you money on Shabbat, you have to stop such a thing before Shabbat. You have to take out the merchandise or close the website in order not to have it working on Shabbat. That's a question we want to touch on today. question starts with a halacha that we found in the Gemara about Shvitat Kelim. Do we say, first of all, there's such a concept of shvitat kelim, which means your kelim, your utensils, anything that you own, should not do melacha on Shabbat. It says in the Torah that mikol asher amarti alechem tishameru. That's a ribui. Say Bet Shammai. It's a gemara in uh, Shabbat Yudchet. Bet Shammai say that mikol asher amarti alechem tishameru lerabot shvitat kelim, which means your utensils should not do melacha on Shabbat. That's the opinion of Bet Shammai. And therefore, the Gemara explains it that it's asur, what it says in the Mishnah, to do all the following. Lo yashre dyo v'samemanim v'karshinin be'erev Shabbat. Which means, how did they make dyo? Dyo means ink. How do you make ink? You have to soak it in water. You have to let it boil. So doing such a thing on Shabbat would be a melacha. Can you do it before Shabbat and let it boil, let it soak in the, in the water in order to produce the dyo, to produce the ink? The Gemara says that according to Bet Shammai, it's not allowed. And shorim et adyo. Bet Hillel argue. Bet Hillel holds that you're allowed. And shorim as well, the samemanim, which means you want to make a dye. You want, you want to make a dye, you want to dye your clothing. You want to make a shirt that's in the color of blue. How do you make that? You first have to produce the dye. How do you make the dye? You take the samemanim, you put them in water, you boil it, and you leave it there for a while until it becomes a dye. Can you have such a thing? It says, en shorim et hasemamanim. That's the opinion of Bet Shammai. Bet Hillel permit it. En shorin et akarshinin. Karshinin means food of an animal. You want to give the animal to eat. You have to take those seeds and you have to make them first soft. And shorim et akarshinim, bet hilel matirim. There's more examples in the Mishnah. For instance, and porsim et ametsudot. You're not allowed to put things in order to be able to bitzad the animals. So you want to hunt in a certain way. You want to trap the animals. It's asur to put the trap before Shabbat, according to Bet Shammai. Why? Shvitat kelim. Shvitat kelim means that your utensils are not allowed to do melacha. Now, we all know that la'alacha, we don't posek like Bet Shammai, we posek like Bet Hillel. So why is this an issue altogether? It's because there's a rishon called the Rokeach. Rokeach writes that halacha is that you're not allowed to have the kelim doing for you melacha on Shabbat. He says that let's say you have animals, or you have all kind of kelim, you want to give them to a goy before Shabbat, on Shabbat you have to take it back from him. Because otherwise, the goy will do a melacha with your utensils. utensils. And that's the sur of shvitat kelim. Rukeach brings that halacha lemaaseh. Can you pee posek like Bet Shammai? Obviously not. How is a rokeach posek like that halacha lemaaseh? Says the Bet Yosef, obviously the rokeach is the opinion of Bet Shammai, 
We're not concerned about that opinion. Do good. That's the opinion of the Bet Yosef, that the Rukeach is like Bet Shammai. But the Bach, in length, explains that no, even Bet Hillel holds the rich Vitat Kelim. What does it mean, Shvitat Kelim, according to Bet Hillel? Bet Hillel argues on Bet Shammai on utensils that you usually don't do Melacha with. Can you do Melacha with them on Shabbat? But Bet Hillel would agree that if you have, a, you have utensils that usually you do melacha with them. Like for instance, let's say you have an axe, kardom, you have an et, you have a shovel, right? Not for the snow, snow shovel. You're allowed, it's not muktzeh, because there's many reasons to say that one could maybe shovel snow on Shabbat. But to shovel the ground, that's definitely asur, that's muktzeh. You're not allowed to have such a thing. And such a shovel, you're not allowed to have on Shabbat doing melacha. How is it going to be doing melacha if you're not allowed to do melacha? You give it to a goy before Shabbat, the goy would use it. So since that's such a keli, that normally you do melacha with, there's a isur of shvitat kelim on such a keli. That's how the Bach explains according to Bet Hillel, which means Bet Hillel agrees that if you have a keli, that normally you do a melacha with it, it would be forbidden, it would be a sur to have on Shabbat doing melacha for you. Let's say by Goy doing it. That's the opinion of the Bach. Surprisingly, who brings this lemaaseh, halacha lemaaseh? The Kafachaim as well. Kafachaim brings first the Bet Yosef <coughs> that rejects the Rokeach and says, no, the Rokeach is according to Bet Shammai. And then he brings the Bach and he says, v'chen pasak Eliyahu Abba. It seems like since the, the Kafachaim brings this halacha lemaaseh, he ends with that. And he brings also the Eliyahu Rabbah that holds like that, that the Kafachaim would hold that one should be careful to be machmir. It's a chumrah. But one should be machmir not to have such kelim that normally you do melacha with. They should not be doing melacha for you on Shabbat. That's how it comes out according to the Kafachaim, to Eliyahu Rabbah. And there are more poskim that hold like that. And if that is true, so coming back to us, when we have, for instance, a computer doing a melacha for you, you have a fax machine, let's say, on Shabbat, bringing faxes in from customers that call in with all kinds of orders. You have any other utensils doing melachot for you on Shabbat. Could be that according to Kafachim, there is a reason to be machmir. But that becomes very hard. Because if that's the case, you'll have to be machmir also not to have an air condition working for you on Shabbat. And so on and so forth. It doesn't end. If you'll ask... Ah, you have a candle doing uh, lighting for you on Shabbat. That's a keli. You'll ask, you have the crack pot doing for you a melacha, the hot plate doing for you a melacha. So that's the Gemara already asking. The Gemara says that how could you have, according to Bet Shammai, the nail, how could you have the pot that on the fire, you need to have a chamin that's hot on Shabbat. How could you have it on Shabbat? It's doing a melacha. How could you have such a thing? And the Gemara says that according to Bet Shammai, a person is mafkir. Before Shabbat, those kelim that there is a mitzvah to use on Shabbat. Like for instance, the candles and the pot that we're talking about. The kedera, the ner. A person is mafkir. He does it hefker. Hefker means you do it ownerless. That's the opinion of Bet Shammai. You have to do such a thing, hefker, before Shabbat. Tosfot says, what do you mean you do hefker? Every Shabbat you have to gather people in order to do it. If care, you need to have two or three people, machloket. You have to gather before Shabbat two or three people in order to be mafkir. The kedera, the ner, is that what you need to do every Shabbat? Right before Shabbat? And Tosfot answers no. Since it's a mitzvah to use those kelim, and since it's hard like this to gather all the time, so one is mafkir beno leven atzmo. Normally, efker beno leven atzmo, which means privately by yourself, doesn't work. You need to have two people at least. Why? Because you've got to be witnesses that know that you did such a hefker. Otherwise, how could you exercise that hefker? Somebody wants to take it. How could he know that that item was hefker if there's nobody that's seen do, you doing such a thing hefker? You have to have two witnesses that could verify that that was hefker. So, Tosfot seems to indicate that it's, it's enough to do Efker by himself. But if you learn Tosfot correctly, the words of, of, of Tosfot come out to be even more of a Chidush, which means one could be 
doing such a hefker without even thinking about it, because it's automatic. It's like what we call hefker bet din hefker, which means automatically, since we know you, you don't want to have such a keli on Shabbat, so therefore automatically before Shabbat, we understand that becomes hefker. Because if we assess and go into your heart, we would understand that you really want to do such a thing hefker. That is how you're able to use such a ner and such a kdera on Shabbat, according to Bet Shammah. Yes? Sorry, I'm making a chiluk here, because in the beginning you mentioned giving kelim to a, to a neighbor and having him use it, and then second you mentioned having the melcha done for you. I'm making a chiluk here between having um, an, a, a somebody else using your kelim and something being done for you, or there's no chiluk over here? There's a chiluk between kelim that you have to make sure you take before Shabbat back, like if, for instance, you, saw, you, you rented your kelim to a goy. You let him use your kelim. So those kelim, you should, according to Bet Shammai, get them back. And even according to the way the Rokeach explains, and could be that it comes out, la as we're saying right now, from the Bach, the Eliyahu Rabbah, and the Kaf Achayim brings it down, you have to take them back and not let those kelim do a melacha on Shabbat. But some kelim... The, it's called e efshar. That's the word Tosfot uses, which means you don't have other choices. You have to have a candle lit on Shabbat. You have to have the crock pot cooking for you or heating up for you the chamin on Shabbat. So what can you do? So in such an instance, we're saying that it becomes automatically hefker. Now, automatically, it's not openly in the Tosfot, but if you learn Tosfot correctly, that's probably what it means. Oh, so that's what we're getting to. We're getting, yes. Oh, so that's where we're getting. So Tosfot, where he asks your question, he says it's Efshar, which means you don't have to make it, uh, you don't have to own your business on Shabbat. You don't have to own your business on Shabbat, and therefore, you don't have to be mafkir, you don't have to have the business working for you on Shabbat. Even if it's not yours, you don't have to have that hefker in your business. Some things you have to have on Shabbat, like the candles and the pot, and some things you don't. But let's get, let's take it to the business question. Now you want to have your website open on Shabbat. So the computer that you're using, maybe you would think that needs to be shut off before Shabbat because of Shvitat Kelim. The reality is that even if you want to be machmir with the opinion of Shvitat Kelim, that is only true when we're saying that something actually works. But today, everything is virtual. You're not working, you're not doing anything on Shabbat, not you and not your Kelim, which means your computer is totally off. Your computer is doing nothing. You have nothing that belongs to you that actually is working on Shabbat, that is actually on, on Shabbat. And therefore, since everything works by itself, there's no issue of Shvitat Kelim. Some people have their servers, they have, it's not, they're not using other, others' serves. So therefore, they have a server by their place, by their company, since let's say it's a large company, then there could be Machmir, if they want, with the din of Shvitat Kelim. But I want to mention Chazon Ovedia. Chazon Ovedia, Chacham Ovedia says, that over here, you wouldn't have an issue, even according to those that want to be Machmir. Why? Because he brings a Chatam Sofer that says that the only Kelim that the Yisur of Shvitat Kelim would apply to them is such Kelim that you do Melacha with your hands. It's your hands that are doing Melacha with them. Like the Kardom we said, like plowing, a Machresha, a Kardom, Et. All those things, plow, uh, the, the, the shovel, the ox, all those things you do with your hands. Only those that says the Chatam Sofer, one maybe wants to be machmir, like the Rokeach says, to say Shvitat Kelim. Otherwise, other things that you don't do with your hands, like for instance, over here, everything works automatically. You don't need to do anything it's on Shabbat. When you offer your merchandise, everything is done automatically. It's not you that's doing anything. Could be that over here you wouldn't have even a tzad to be machmir according to what Chacham of Adyah holds. What about the Mishnah that um, Bethila Bet Shemai, about the, the water mill before Shabbat that goes on, and then the Bet Shemai and Bet Hila have, have a, um, a, a makrokit, and then we, we, Bet Hila says that even if it makes noise, 
Right? Does that does that play a role here? Well, ma ma making noise is another. Uh, that, so even, even so, we still rule like the Hila that it's, it's it's allowed to make the, the water mill you know, work. So even then, it's a it's a real melacha going on on Shabbat. But it's, since it started before Shabbat on its own, that's continuing on its own on Shabbat. We rule that it, uh, uh, we're, we're lenient, right? We let it go. Like, we like say a, that like Bet like like, like, like Bet like So that's what we're saying. We're so, saying like 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 Bet Hillel, There's no shvitat kelim. Those that want to say that there is Shvitat Kelim, even according to Bet Hillel, it's only things that you would do melacha with your hands. Over there, it works by itself. Otherwise, you wouldn't, how would, it, how would anything do, how would anything work on Shabbat? You have to have a hand working it out in order to say that such a thing should be a su. So therefore, if you let a goy do something like that, there's a tzad to be machmir. But something that works by itself, and shorim karshinin, and posimum tzudot, whatever examples you'll give, those things that normally you start before Shabbat and the melacha continues to Shabbat. Yes? Well, in a case where this wasn't allowed, having your computer or your business on on Shabbat, even when it's off, because in two cases, one where sometimes people leave the receipt machine going on. So they just leave it on, computer's off, but it just continues to give out all the orders that were made on Shabbat or yeah. whatever, you know? So is that allowed, having your receipt machine on? Receipt machine? Yeah, there's like when you're when you're on eBay, there's like a tracking label. But that's not not that not anything that belongs to you. You don't have anything that belongs to you over there. Actually, your, your, printing machine. your printing machine is working. So if something is actually working, something is actually on. Again, it's allowed. There's a tzad to be machmir. There's a tzad to be machmir. Chacham of Adya would say that there is not even a tzad to be machmir. Because you're not actually doing such a thing with your own hands. It works automatically. And on number two, um, what if the person, he had, um, he had a business on Shabbat, and he would go to a guy, and it wouldn't be a written contract, it would be a really close friend of his, and he'd say, from here on out, I'm going to pay you, you're going to be the owner for every Saturday, from Friday night to Saturday night, you're going to be the owner of the, of the website business. And for the rest of every Saturday night, I'll give you $10 for being the owner. Okay, so we're mixing over here cases. That's a case of can you make partnership with a goy in your business. There's two issues. Let's work out one issue. If we'll have time, we'll go into partnership with a goy in a business which has the dim in the halakha that permits such a thing. Okay, yeah, partnership works. The way partnership works on, uh, on the halakha is that you sell him the business for Shabbat. We'll get to it if we have the time. Okay, that was Shvitat Kelim. I just wanted to touch on the halacha of Shvitat Kelim to show that it's not something that's totally off Shvitat Kelim, as people would think that it's Bet Shammai and you don't have to be concerned about this at all. Second thing I want to touch with is Shchar Shabbat. You're making money on Shabbat. Your business is working on Shabbat. Your website is open on Shabbat. Or you have it on the Amazon or whatever it is, you're offering merchandise and you're making money. You have over here an issue called Schar Shabbat. You're not allowed to earn money on Shabbat. Is that permitted or not? We found that in the Alakha, in Siman Shinvav, in Shulchan Aruch, Ilchot Shabbat, and also in Ilchot Tkiat Shofar, Tafkuf Peihei. The Shulchan Aruch brings over there two opinions. In the Modchi, he brings two opinions. One opinion holds like Rav Baruch that it's Asur, and one opinion holds like Shmuel, Rav Shmuel, this is not Shmuel from the Gemara. It does a Rishonim that the Motri brings, that it's Mutar. And the Bet Yosef over there asks, I don't understand, if there's a Isur to get Schar Shabbat, you're not allowed to earn money on Shabbat. Says the Bet Yosef, how could you allow for having, for instance, the, the case over there in... Uh, in the Motri, and what the tool brings down is doing something for a mitzvah. Let's say you want to be a chazan on Rosh Hashanah, on Shabbat. Are you allowed to get paid for being a chazan? You want to be kore in the Torah. Are you allowed to get paid for being kore the Torah on Shabbat? Or maybe not. It's the dim to be mekel because it's be'avla'a. When you, for instance, read in the Torah. So since you have to prepare much before Shabbat, it takes a long, long time to prepare to read the Torah. So you're not actually getting paid only for Shabbat reading, but you're getting pre paid also for preparing so long. So therefore, when it comes Shabbat, you're just exercising of what you prepared for so long. For that, we're saying 
that you could get paid because it's be'avla. Okay. But are you allowed to have, for instance, you're allowed to get paid for chazanut on Shabbat. You didn't prepare at all. You don't need to prepare. You come on Shabbat, you do chazanut for half an hour, an hour, and you get paid. You get your check. Or a, a girl that wants to babysit the kids on Shabbat. She comes on Shabbat to the house, or in the shul, they have kids playing. She comes and she has the kids over there playing, and she watches them, or she plays with them. Can you get paid for such a thing? That's called schar Shabbat. Comes the Bet Yosef and says, for a mitzvah, how could you get paid? If it's a sur, it's a sur. And the Bet Yosef says a fascinating chidush. She says that since getting schar Shabbat, is only Isur de Rabbanan, as he proves, he has over there a sugiya to show what he's saying. It's a whole sugiya that he shows in the Bet Yosef. But he says that since Har Shabbat is only the Rabbanan, therefore, Chachamim midu divrehem bemekom mitzvah, which means they pushed away their restriction of Har Shabbat, getting Har Shabbat, if it has to do with a mitzvah. And the Shran Aruch brings both opinion in Shin Zayin, and in Taf Kuf Pei Shin Vav, and in Taf Kuf Pei He. So if you want to know if a Chazan could get paid on Shabbat, the answer is yes, because he's making a mitzvah. When you're making a mitzvah, you could get paid on Shabbat. But, and that's the big but, it says in the Bet Yosef, that En Oroe Siman Bracha, this is how the Mishnah Burah brings down in Shin Vav, En Oroe Siman Bracha, which means, indeed, you're going to get paid, but that money, you're going to lose. There's two, two explanations what it means, en oroe schar bracha. En oroe siman bracha. What does it mean, en oroe siman bracha? One explanation is that whatever you earn, you lose. That's one side to say, en oroe siman bracha. So you're not gaining much. How you lose it? Oh, the washing machine will break. Whatever you made over here, you'll have to pay over there. That's one side. Another way to explain en oroe siman bracha means that you plant seeds, for instance, and you want it to grow. And now, it doesn't grow. So what happens? You didn't gain anything. But not only that you didn't gain anything, anything, you lost. You lost the seeds that you planted. It costs money to to plant seeds. You planted seed all over your your garden, and nothing grew. So you lost out. Over here, NOS Iman Bracha. That is, a person is doing it for a mitzvah. If a person is not doing it for a mitzvah, is it not doing so in a mitzvah fashion? So therefore, there's also a isur to get schar Shabbat. Okay, by the way, to mention Chacham of Adiyah Chidush, he said that if a person is involved in a mitzvah, like we're saying a chazan, a chazan gets paid for Shabbat, how is he allowed to get paid for Shabbat? If he does it bavla, let's say he comes also sometimes during the week, wonderful. Then it's no question altogether. He can do that. And get paid, and we're really saying, what does it mean by Allah? It's like swallowing. We swallow the Shabbat, and we're saying that really he gets paid for the weekday, not for the Shabbat. Okay, good. If he does it this way, no problem. By the way, even if he does it this way, it has to be something that's valuable, which means he comes during the week, and he wants to do chazanut. It needs to be that whatever he was paying for Shabbat, you could say that was a value to pay him for the weekday. Let's say he just prays mincha, a regular mincha. Right? People don't usually get paid for mincha. So for Shabbat, or let's say for Rosh Hashanah, he's getting paid $5,000, $10,000 for chazanut. He's unbelievable chazan. But he wants to do it by Avla. So what does he come? He comes after Rosh Hashanah. And he prayed a regular, re, prays chazanut, chazan, regular shliach tzibur mincha. For such a thing, nobody pays $10,000. So it has to be something that you could somehow say that I swallowed the Shabbat within the weekday. Uh, 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 the lady that was babysitting, let's say, she's working only on Shabbat. So she said, you know what, I'll come during the week and I'll pick up some napkins from the floor, some tissues from the, from the tables and I'll throw it. Yeah, but you're getting paid for that Shabbat $100 for picking out a few tissues for that. You're not getting $100. And therefore... It needs to be something that you can value. Says Chacham of Adyar Chidush, that chazan that's getting paid only for Shabbat, if he uses that money also for a mitzvah, that money is protected. Unbelievable Chidush, which means he could go and buy with his farim, give it to tzedakah, maybe pay his, uh, the, the kids' tuition, to go to yeshiva, it's a mitzvah to pay tuition. So such a thing would protect the money. Beautiful Chidush. But we're getting to Schar Shabbat, we're saying over here, 
that this website of yours that's open on Shabbat is earning you money. How could you have money earning on Shabbat? Famous Noda Be'udah that says that money earned on Shabbat is a sur only for services. If you did a service, you're not allowed to have money for Shabbat, like the babysitter, like the chazan, like the Baal Kore, those are services. But let's say you sell something, then you're allowed to claim that merchandise, there's no, the, the money, and there's no isur, schar Shabbat. No, W that was asked about a mikveh on Shabbat. You want to go to a mikveh on Shabbat, and you get, you're paying the mikveh over there. How could you pay the mikveh? It's schar Shabbat, they're making money on Shabbat. Says the Nodabida, no, since it costs money to heat up the place, since it, it, the, the, the cleaning of the place, it is, there's, the upkeeping of the place costs money. So you're not paying for the service that they're letting you use the mikveh, but rather you're paying for the upkeeping. For that you're allowed. For here, the Puskim bring out that idea that whatever you're selling something, you're allowed to claim that on Shabbat, and you're allowed to have the money for that. Therefore, you're allowed to have those machines, for instance, that sell uh, drinks, right? You have soda machines. On the outside, you put them in the street. A person comes in, he puts a dollar, and he takes a Coke, right? How could you have that on Shabbat? The answer is that Schar Shabbat, in such a way, it's mutar, because you're giving a person a drink for the money. It's not that you're giving services. According to that comes out of Chiluk. Depends what your website is. If you're offering services on a website, then you're not allowed to claim the money that you had and made on Shabbat, because that's a service. Sometimes you have service. You offer a service. You want to know how to fix the house. So I'll give you a crash course in two hours. A person looks at a video that you provide, and he pays for that. That's a service. You didn't lose anything by giving that, by showing him the video. And therefore, for that you're not allowed to get paid. But for merchandise you're selling, you're allowed to get paid. Good. That's the issue of Schar Shabbat is taken care of with the fact that you're getting paid for something that you're giving away for merchandise. And that would be permitted. Yes. So I want my buddy to go to a nursing home on Shabbat just to be a mashgiach. And also do like services like doing kiddush for the, for the elderly. And, but he only does it once a week on Shabbat specifically. So the rabbi is going to pay him for that Shabbat. Is he allowed to accept that money? So we're saying like this. Since he's doing a mitzvah, he's going to make a mitzvah. Since he's making a mitzvah, he's allowed to receive the money, but an oroes iman bracha. What do you do when you're not going to be oroes iman bracha? Do a mitzvah with it. Anyway, you have to pay tuition for your kids, right? That's a mitzvah. You wanted to buy a sefer. That's, that's, uh, and, and it's much better, like it says in the Taz and the Shach, in Ilchot Tzedakah, that whatever you buy, whenever you buy Sfarim, write in, on the Sefer that Nikna Mikaspe Maaser, let's say you've paid for Maaser, and you borrow it, you lend it to people to use. So you're making a mitzvah with it. Rabbi Yashif says today it doesn't apply this thing, because today nobody borrows Sfarim. You never go to your friend and tell him, I need a Chumash, can you lend me your Chumash? I need a Gemara. Everybody have all the Sfarim, you need a Sefer, you don't go to your friend. That's not usually what's done. And therefore, Avelachiv says it doesn't apply today. But if you do a mitzvah with the Maser, or with the, or, or with the money you received from Melech Shabbat, so you protect, says Chacham Ovadia, the bracha within that money. So that's something that one should apply. Right. One more point to, uh, to mention with that. Sometimes you have a cleaning lady come into your house on Shabbat, and she works, and then after Shabbat you want to pay her. Can you give her the money, or maybe it's Chal Shabbat, she's making money on Shabbat. So the Mishnah Bura says, and this is accepted in the Puskim, that Chal Shabbat is only a sur for the person receiving, not the person giving. And therefore we hear the Goya, since she receives the money, she doesn't have a sur to receive the money, the money, right? So there's no problem whatsoever for the Goya, to receive the money. Can you give her the money? There's no issue on the giver. There's only issue on the person receiving. Okay? I want to go to a third sugiyah. The third sugiyah that this could be an issue over here. And that is, the kinyan you do on Erev Shabbat, that's chal on Shabbat, big machloket aposkim, if such a kinyan is permitted, you make a kinyan. What does it mean a kinyan? You want to buy something. You want to buy something from your friend, or you want to sell something to your friend. Let's say a scenario that you want to buy something from your friend. 
but you don't ha- he doesn't have it right now over here. It's going to be available for him only on Shabbat. So therefore, you make a kinyan right now. You give him money, right? In a case that money would be kone, uh, let's say with a goy, or other scenarios that kesef is kone. Normally kesef is not kone. You need to do a kinyan over the object, the meshicha, agba'a, and so on. But in a case, money would be kone. You do the kinyan over the or. You do a different kind of kinyan. Kinyan, for instance, sudal. You pick up something, and with that, that, uh, that, that the, the salesperson picks it up, the item becomes, becomes yours. But you make over here a condition. You say to him that I sell you the item, or I buy the item, the kinyan is done now, but the actually halot kinyan, which means when would it change the balut, the ownership, from one to another, that would be only on Shabbat. You hear? Such a trick. The kinyan, everything would be exercised now. But actually, when is it going to be, when the, the, the ownership will change, transfer, that will be on Shabbat. Are you allowed to do such a thing or not? Many poskim say that it's mutal. The Maram Sheik brings like this. The, 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 the list of poskim, the Torah Chaim, Machane Chaim, Torah Chesed, Amudei Esh, a list of poskim that say that it's mutal. Why? Because they say it's very simple. The Maram Sheik says very simple. You're allowed to have a melacha starting before Shabbat, as we explained before. That you're allowed to start a melacha before Shabbat that continues to Shabbat. There's no issue in that. So what is the problem? Over here, you started something before Shabbat, and it continues to Shabbat. Should be fine. But, very famous, Rabbi Kiva Eagle, with a list of poskim after him, like the Maribuna, Ktaf Sofer, and also the Grot Moshe. Rabbi Moshe finds in his posek like this, that the Machmir, they're saying, no, you can't do a melacha before Shabbat, you can't do a kinyan before Shabbat, that would take effect on Shabbat, that the transfer would take effect on Shabbat. You're not allowed. And with that, you have now a serious machloket. If, what to do? If God Moshe was machmir alacha lemaaseh, Rav Belsky Zatzal writes in his sefer, Shulchan Alevi, to be machmir, it's a sur. So what are you supposed to do? By the way, what, how could it be machmir? How could Rabbi Kiva Iger be machmir on such a thing? The Torah Chesed asks on Rabbi Kiva Iger, he says, how could you be machmir where the halacha pshuta, the Gemara says that any melacha, kol melacha shematchelet me'erev Shabbat, muteret ligamer b'Shabbat, you're allowed to start a melacha before Shabbat, that ends on Shabbat. There's no problem with that. It's Gemara b'Ferush. So therefore, why, how could you be machmir in a case that's contradicting the Gemara? And the beautiful chidush of the Avne Nezer, he says that what Rabbi Kiva Eger means is the following. Normally, whenever a melacha is done, that melacha that you started would, would continue without you as well. It's, you're just starting it, and it will continue automatically. It doesn't need you to continue that melacha. Which means, like for instance, the example we gave. You're putting something, uh, karshinim, dyo, you're putting the metsuda, you're putting it out, and now you live. You live the scenario, you live the scene. It's going to continue doing what it's doing, even without you. Even if a person, lo alenu, dies, it continues. But what happened with a kinyan? If a person does a kinyan, which means you, you're changing Rashut from one to another, right? If a person did the kinyan now, and lo alenu he dies, or let's say he changes his mind, and he sells it to a third party, that kinyan is not valid anymore. It's batel. It's void. So therefore, he says, you see that the person is still within the act on Shabbat as well. Until the transfer actually takes place, he's still involved in the act. Although not, he's not involved with the action, he's not manually involved, he's not doing anything physically, but you need to have his mind throughout the whole time until the kinyan takes place, right? There's a gemara like this machloket, if a person gives a get and he dies. He gives a get to a shliach to give it over to his wife. And so on and so forth. But you see from here, that idea that I'm saying, that the Avne Nezer is mechadesh, is beautiful, that Rabbi Kiva Iger means, because you still have to be involved in the trans- transfer of the mechira, right? The kinyan, although it started now, but it needs to end later. It's not like it starts and it continues by itself. The person is still with his dot on, still involved with the item. And therefore, Abba Kiva Eagle would say 
that if a person is doing such a mechira, or such a kinyan before Shabbat, is not allowed to have it done and transferred, and the halot of the kinyan should, should actually take place on Shabbat. So that's one of the things that one might want to be machmir, to use such a, such a website on Shabbat that's, 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 that's working for you and producing you money. And that's how Rabelsky Zatzal was machmir, because of that. He was machmir like those opinions, like the Grot Moshe brings down Allah HaLemaseh. But there's a simple chiluk, obviously, between the two cases. When we're saying that you started a kinyan before Shabbat and it's hal on Shabbat, that's because you did something over here. You actually started a kinyan. You were involved in this. And you are involved until the end. But when we're dealing with our scenario, that you have a website and you offer merchandise over there, you're not doing anything. You're right now in the shul doing exactly nothing. You're in the shul praying and going home and eating your chamin with your family. You're doing nothing with that. You're not involved in that cell whatsoever. Before Shabbat, you had those items on the website to offer. And if Goy comes in on Shabbat, he presses the button that he wants to buy a certain thing that has nothing to do with you whatsoever. You're not involved in this at all. And therefore, such a thing would be mutar even according to the machmirim. And it's a pele on Obelsky how he was machmir. It's a rich, it's a rich yun gadol, a mitzvah liyashev. Why he was machmir? What's his medame? He wants to be machmir. Even he says, according to the matirim, it should be asur. And the chiluk should be just the opposite, the way I understand it, that even according to the machmirim, over here, you're not involved whatsoever with the cell. So that is something that... Schar Shabbat we ruled out. It's definitely no Schar Shabbat. The poskim agree that there's no Schar Shabbat when you're offering merchandise. How about maybe you'll say there's Lifneiver over here. Maybe a Jew will get into your website and buy something. So you're causing somebody to sin on Shabbat. The answer is that we don't have to worry about this for many reasons. First of all, most of the people that's buying are goim. So you don't have to be involved with maybe a, a Jew will buy or maybe not. There's such a concept of Rov in the Grot Moshe. He brings down, can you go to a hospital if you're a Kohen? Because maybe there's people that are dead over there. So, so Moshe says that since most of the people that's dead over there are not Jewish, so you don't have to worry about it. It's mutar. Although it's not davar uh, mukhlat in the Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch doesn't allow you lechatchila to go to a place that has oil or met even of a goy. But without that point, so Moshe says that since it's rov goyim, it's mutar. And um, the Badea Shulchan doesn't understand Rav Moshe. What's the, what's the difference if it's rov or miut? It's enough that you have one Jew. Let's say you have a hundred goyim dead. Let's say you have one Jew. What's shayach rov or miut? But that's a Grot Moshe. Grot Moshe is, uh, is Kodesh, is Alachali. We consider this... Almost like Allah Chalim Moshe Misinai, right? So we can apply the same idea over here. So, but Lifne even really doesn't apply over here for many reasons. First of all, it's a safek if a Jew will buy. On the safek, many poskim bring that there's no isur of Lifne Iver. Ben Ishchai, in, in Torah Lishma, brings that in safek, we do say Lifne Iver. He has over there an interesting case that if you have a worker, a goy worker, and you want to know if he steals. So what do you do? You put a dollar, like he you make it look like he doesn't know that it fell from you, and he wants to see if he would take it. He wants to try him out. So Ben Yishchai says, in Torah Lishma, it's not allowed to be done. Why? Because you machshil the goy in gezel. Because you're not allowed, if neiver is even according, even for goyim. The Gemara says, lo iten le goy le nochri, ever minachai le nochri. So it applies also to a goyim. That's first of all. So even on a safek, the Ben Yishchai says, it would be a sur. Secondly, maybe you would be makne. Maybe you would do it hefker, or you would be makne the goy, the dollar, and then you don't have a problem of nif neiver. Huh? He, he doesn't know that, so you're still... Oh, so since the goy doesn't know, that says the, the, the Torah Lishma. So therefore, it's just like you offer somebody basar, the, the Gemara says, chashav lechol basar chazir, v'ala be'ado basar tale, you wanted to do avera. Happened to be that it was an avera. Still, it's considered tzarich tshuva vekapara. Tzarich slicha vekapara. So therefore, it's asur. So one minute. So lif neiver doesn't apply according to most poskim on safek. But even more than that, when we're dealing with lif neiver, famous shach in your red and the gul mirvava, 
in Siman Kufnun Aleph, in Yoreh Deya Elchot Avodah Zarah, they bring down over there that Lif Neiver doesn't apply to a Mumar, which means if a person is a Mumar, he's Mechalel Shabbat, you don't have... They don't actually say Lifnei Iver, they say the din of Messiah. There's a din Lifnei Iver and Messiah. Lifnei Iver means the Oraita. The Oraita, the Isur of the Oraita of Lifnei Iver is only Betre Avre Denara, which means the Goy can't take, or the, the, the person can't take the Isur unless you give it to him. It's not available to him any other way. But if it's in Chad Avre Denara, which means he can take it with, without you, you're just making it more available for him, that becomes only the Rabbanan. The Rabbanan is called Messiah. You're helping him do a Yisur. He could do it without you, but you're helping him. That's also not permitted. Mid the Rabbanan. So the Shach and the, the Gulmer Vava say that that Yisur is only when we're dealing with a, with a, with a God-fearing Jew. But when we're talk, talking about a Mumar, somebody who's Mechalel Shabbat, somebody who's doing a Virot, you don't have that Yisur. So over here we're talking with a Mechalel Shabbat. This goes to a computer and he buys an item on Shabbat. So that's a sad to say, you don't have to be machmir for such a person. By the way, Magen Avram argues on the, on the shach. But that's the Isur of Lifnei Iver. I want to cover... Huh? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We, we, we could be mekel for other reasons as well. One minute, I just want to touch in the few minutes that we have left with the eBay auction. Can you have an eBay auction? Which means... You want to buy something, you give your offer on Friday, and the final sale will become on Shabbat. So you basically, you gave your offer, you gave your credit card number, and in case you are the highest offer, you, it will be yours. But when would, the, when would that take place? On Shabbat. Can you have such a thing? There's this open maram shik that says it's muta. we'll see why. Also the Cheshev Efot. First of all, it touched the Halacha in the Shulchan Aruch Shin Zayin, Sif Dalet. Over there it says, Mutar liten le'eno Yehudi ma'ot me'erev Shabbat, liknot lo, uvilvat shelo yomar lo k'nei b'Shabbat. You're allowed to give money to a, go, to a goy. Tell him, listen, I need you to buy something for me from the marketplace. Go and buy for me something in the marketplace. It's mutar, although he's going to go on Shabbat. As long as you didn't tell him, go buy it on Shabbat. If you told him, buy for me, here's the money, go buy for me, it's mutar. So over here, if we want to compare the two, you're telling the goy, I want to buy that item from you. You didn't tell him that you should give it to me on Shabbat. So such a thing would be permitted. As long as he didn't say, buy it for me on Shabbat, it would be permitted. Right? So you gave your offer before Shabbat, and the goy actually would finalize the sale on Shabbat. But the Mishnah Burah brings them again of Ram and the Taz, and he says that if the only way to buy that item is on Shabbat, because let's say it's Yom Ashuk, it's open only on Shabbat. The marketplace is open only on Shabbat. Weekdays, it's closed. It's some businesses open only on Shabbat. So therefore, even if you didn't tell him to buy it on Shabbat, it's self-understood that it's on Shabbat. You don't need to say it. So therefore, it's like he's told him on Shabbat, and therefore it's a su. Over here also, since you know that's going to take place on Shabbat, because the date, the deadline is on Shabbat. Should be a su, right? But over here also, he permits, the Cheshev Ha'efod says that it's, it's mutar, why? Because there's a difference between the two. Over there, when you send the Goy to do for you a Kinyan on Shabbat, you actually ask him to do a Kinyan, which is something that's a su, or pick it up and bring it home, which is also davar asur. It's not allowed to take it out from Rishut Ha'achit, Rishut Ha'abim, Mimetaltel, for you. Or do the Kinyan, as we explained before, it's also a su. But in our scenario, you're not asking him to do anything. You just want him to keep it for you. To keep it for you, it's not davar asur. What could be the case of the Cheshut Ha'efot doesn't apply to us today. Because the Kinyan itself is chal. It's just, the God doesn't just, doesn't just keep it for you. Rather, when he finalizes the sale, there's a Kinyan over here. There's an actual Kinyan. Where the Kinyan is Situmta, which is Kinyan HaSoharim, Haskamat HaSoharim. Or maybe uh, uh, there's a Kinyan called Midin Eved Knani, or may, which needs explanation, or maybe mitzad dina de malchut adina. But there's a kinyan involved over here. How could you permit such a thing? Says the cheshev ha'efod another terutz. He says that since by f- f- from what you concern, the kinyan could have been finalized already before Shabbat. You don't need to wait until Shabbat. Why are you waiting till Shabbat? That's only the goy waiting, not you. You're willing to finalize the sale right then and there. 
the goy for his own in, for his own benefit waits until Shabbat. So it's data the nafshe avid. Therefore, such a thing would be mutar. The Maram Shik says a different thing. He says that every melacha that started before Shabbat could be finished on Shabbat, and that's in, that's for that as well. And then you have the Chilkat Yaakov that says something totally different. He says that there's a concept that you don't want sometimes isurim done in your behalf. For instance, we have a halacha that if a guy comes into your house on Pesach with chametz, and he wants to live it in your house, you don't want to keep, be koneh that chametz. You're not, in, you're not interested in the chametz. So therefore, even if he puts it in your house, you're not koneh. Why not? Because you understand that you don't want to be koneh the chametz on Pesach, a person can't force you to be connect something that against your will, and a isur is something that you don't want to have on Pesach. Same thing over here. Since the goy is makne to you the item on Shabbat, you don't want to be connect on Shabbat. So therefore, though you are the winner of that item, and you want the auction, but since you don't want to be koneh on Shabbat, you just want to be koneh Motzei Shabbat, so although the goy made the kinan, he finalized the kinan on Shabbat, but as much as far as you're concerned, it's pushed over till Motzei Shabbat to actually take place. That's a beautiful chidush that the Chilkat Yaakov says, and there's so much more to speak about this uh, this this kinyan and this uh, idea of being uh, open on 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 Shabbat. The internet should be open, uh, or, or offering merchandise, or offering on auctions, and so on and so forth. But this, we just touched the very very tip. You had a question over there, right? Yeah. Yes, bravo. Do, uh, do it after. Okay. Chazak <laughs> baruch. Yes. Now, does this kind of apply to, for example, you own like a business that's not online, so it's a physical business, and after you're a barista owner, the person that you have to buy them, the workers are Jewish. They're allowed to keep it open. Absolutely not. You're not allowed to have a business open on Shabbat. Even if you... You're not working, and they're not Jewish. Even if, even if, even if, ah, huh? not only Shabbat. Shabbat. You're not allowed. There's a isur. There's a isur to have. We didn't speak about that. I wanted to speak about that as well. There's a isur to have your business open on Shabbat. There's a isur marit ein. There's a isur of people knowing that your business is open on Shabbat. And since that business is yours. It doesn't make a difference if you have all going working there, or even if the, it's 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 it's, uh, it's working by itself. Let's say the machine that I told you would not be at the street; rather, it would be at your store. You open your store. You know what you have in your store? You have washing machines, right? Today you have this uh, laundromat, right? You don't need to do anything. That's it. You don't even have a woman by the cashier. Everything is machines. You want quarters? Put a dollar. The machine gives you quarters. You go to the machine, everything is operated by itself. You don't need to do anything. That's it. You don't need to do anything. Can you have that open on Shabbat? No, because since it's a Jewish business, Jewish business is not allowed to be open on Shabbat, even if you're not involved in this whatsoever. That's the halacha in Shulchan So, well, over here... No, like a 1% can you do partnership with a goy? The halacha permits you to do partnership with a goy. Partnership means, in this aspect, that you sell him the business for Shabbat. The maise, le maise, le maise. Although there is such a halacha in Shulchan Aruch, so many rabbis called me, I can't even tell you how many, with, actually, let's do it, there's a person that really, you know, is having a hard time, he has a business, he, needs to, he wants to close, he wants to start keeping Shabbat, he wants this... All kind of scenarios, can you work it out for him? There's no rabbi in New York that would work this out for you, that will do this, uh, this, this contract with you with a goy. No rabbi. Unbelievable. Why? When it comes to Shabbat, nobody wants to touch the Shabbat. Unless, you know, Ramosha did it, you know, for who? Huge businesses, like a Century 21, like Dwayne Reed, things like that. A person wants to become a Baal Teshuvah, he has a Century 21. And we tell him to go close on Shabbat. That's not possible. It's not possible. So for such businesses, La Moshe was, uh, was, was, was willing to do this uh, contract, this partnership, as we call it. But if you have a small business, you're not going to find... It's my experience, again, it's my experience, maybe you would find. By my experience, you won't find, or not, for sure you won't find easily, somebody that's willing to do such a, such a partnership. So P&H Photo, they're Moshe Shan, 
B and H? Yeah, they're closed. B and H is closed. I don't. Choshesh for Moshe for Kinyanim? No, 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 no. B and H, I don't know. I, I, look, I don't know. But I'm assuming the B. I, I never spoke to them. I don't know the reasoning. It but I'm assuming it is closed on Shabbat. Yeah. It's, it's a huge website. One of the biggest. One of the biggest right. websites. Of operating website and it's closed, but I think the reason is they want to be Mekadesh and Shamayim. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't know if if they have. Uh, they're being machmir, right? Being but I don't know if the machmir because maybe la halacha like this, like that. I think they just want to be Mekadesh when you know that the business is closed on Shabbat. Could be that it's because it's a Jewish business. So then, what I'm saying right now, Maritain Jewish business. Maritain, right? Although in a, a website today it doesn't even have Maritain because. There's nobody that ha- that's that's behind the scene doing anything. Everything is operated Everyone automatically. True, but but let's say you buy something on a- B and H on Shabbat. Nothing's happening. At Motel Shabbat, they'll take care of it. They're not delivering you and they're not sending p- uh, packages on Shabbat. So Chorah, there's no Maritain as well. Thank you for coming. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.